Sammasambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato Sammasambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato Sammasambuddhassa Buddhang dhammang sankhang namasami Ito parang sakkajang dhammo sotapote Okay, great. Good to see everyone. Been here about a week in Seattle now. I'm starting to acclimatize. I haven't fallen over in the snow like an idiot, so I'm. I think I'm doing okay. So so far, so good. Uh, probably say that and now walk outside and off I go. Yeah, it's been it's been really nice. I've had the chance to meet a lot of you. Uh, over the past week, it's been yeah, it's been really inspiring to see what's happening here and the people that are coming and the people that are offering dana to me every day. Come down to Pike Place in the freezing cold in the morning and come and give me some food. It's been it's been really really encouraging encouraging to see. Um, and obviously, I've been talking to a lot of people over the last week or so about the pilgrimage that's coming up. Is anybody that's in the room is, are they going on the pilgrimage? Oh, there's a fair few of you. Nice, nice. So talking to some other people as well that have been going, that are about to go on the pilgrimage, and obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of you could say different kinds of feelings that come up when we think about the pilgrimage. There's you know for some people there's excitement, some people they have this uh, really uplifting kind of ideal of what the what the pilgrimage is going to be. Some people you have like kind of apprehension and resistance. What am I doing? Why am I going here? Why am I joining this big group of people? Um, even people have sort of doubts, um, and some people just don't really know what to expect from the pilgrimage. So, just as a just as a as a as a form of thought, what what does and this is obviously just for or for everybody, doesn't not just for the people that are going on pilgrimage. But what does a pilgrimage mean to everybody? Does anybody have an idea of what a yeah yeah traveling to a sacred place? Anybody else? Yeah yeah. You want to say something? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. I think it's. It's. It's all of these different kinds of things. And when when we think of uh, pilgrimage, there's we we can think of something like pilgrimage, and we can think of a pilgrim, as well. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, I, I don't come from a country that has pilgrims that do Thanksgiving, so you might have this like whole kind of baggage associated with pilgrims. I, I don't have it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of a pilgrim in a different way, of somebody that goes on one of these, one of these kinds of journeys. So, but when we think of what a pilgrimage is, yeah, you're right, it's, it's this aspect of going to a physical location that has some kind of meaning for the individual. So obviously for Buddhists, you might go to you see to the Bodhi tree in India, or you might go to uh, any of the other four, uh, of three places in the Buddha's life. Um, you know, for a Muslim, you might go to Mecca. For, uh, uh, for a Jew, you might go to Jerusalem. Uh, for a Christian, you might go to Bethlehem or Rome or something like that. Or even if you're sort of secular, you might go to different places in the world that are associated with history. You might really be, you know, into Egyptology or something, and so on. Going to Egypt is like a like a pilgrimage in some way, or going and visiting Michelangelo's David in Florence or something like this. So it's this going to a particular place that has some kind of meaning for you. But a pilgrim is different. I think, in some kind of way. A pilgrim is the person that undertakes this, this pilgrimage. A pilgrim is somebody that wants to go on some kind of journey to 
find something out and to transform themselves in some kind of way. And through that transformation, understand and learn something about themselves or their existence, and then to bring that back. And to bring that back and bring it into their lives and to change something about their lives because of that. So we have the external pilgrimage, but we also have the internal pilgrim. So it's an external journey, but it's also an internal journey as well. And so, you know, the next question comes up of like, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to like go, well, one, why would you want to physically go somewhere? Or two, why would you want to go on this kind of inward journey? And, you know, I asked Nisabo this. I was like, well, why are you going? You're like, I, I've been on pilgrimages before and like with a lot of people and it's, it's, you know, it's chaotic and you've got a lot of bags and you're jumping on tra and trains and flights and all these kinds of things and there's a lot going on. And so, you know, the question comes up of, well, why would you want to do something like this? And he gave me this really nice answer. He gave me the answer that uh, what his objective is with something like this is to to go to the Bodhi tree where things, you know, where Buddhism ostensibly where it started, and to really align the intention of the Clear Mountain community and bring about this intention and start to bring that into the world, but then also go to Thailand and, and uh, connect with the tradition and connect with the lineage and, and, and really sort of, as he has the way he says it, you know, sit at the feet of the masters and, and for everybody to be able to connect with that with that tradition as well. So I think this is a, this is a great kind of thing uh, to, to undertake. And, you know, the, this is something that's very, you know, awe-inspiring. It's, it's, it brings up this kind of faith kind of thing. But anybody that knows me knows that I'm a, I, I'm a little bit of a pessimist as well. Nisabo is really outflowing and everything's great and there's a, I'm going to go this and we get a lot of faith and I'm like, uh, Let's, let's, uh, what could happen? So, with being a pilgrim, being a being a pilgrim and going on a pilgrimage, it's yeah, it's to inspire faith. But what else is important about a journey? About a pilgrimage? Sorry, the heart nailed it. E exactly, part of the journey is the obstacles, the hardships, the trials that you actually might face along the way. This is, this is what causes the transformation. This is the thing, these are the actual things that really you learn from. These are the things that change you as an individual, the obstacles, the trials, the challenges that you face. Anybody that's, you know, maybe sort of familiar with mythology in some kind of way, you might have probably all heard of Joseph Campbell, you know, that the, the hero's quest or the pilgrim's quest or something like that. It always, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an archetype, it's a narrative that sort of comes through and, you know, obviously it starts off by, you know, this, the individual, they're, they're in their comfy place and there's some kind of calling, there's some kind of calling and you don't, you know, you don't, the, the, the individual never wants to go on this calling. Nobody ever wants to leave, I don't know, where's, where's in the Hobbit, where is it? The Shire, they don't want to leave the Shire, yeah, that's right. Nobody wants to leave the Shire, but then, you know, they're called to some kind of uh, 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 undertaking. And then, you know, the, you know, the, 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 like the spiritual, the spiritual being comes along, and that's, that's probably like Nisabo in this, in this story. So Nisabo is like a small, bald Gandalf kind of thing with, with no stick or... <laughs> So yeah. So then the you know then the you know, then the archetypal spiritual person comes along to guide one out, and then one leaves leaves the Shire, and you know then starts to face the first the first sort of obstacle that's there. And once they get through that first obstacle, they're separated from the place that was, and they're in this unknown and in the place that is now. And again, this is this is where the obstacles start to come up. This is where the challenges start to come up. Once you get out of that comfort zone. This is where all the problems start to come. And through those obstacles and challenges and trials, the individual starts to change until they actually have 
undergone so much of a change, they go to the final, you know, the final kind of battle or whatever it is, and they eventually get the reward and then they bring it back. So this is part of a pilgrimage as well. And this is a part of being a pilgrim, is that you have to go out somewhere to get some kind of reward. And there are trials and tribulations that you're going to have to go through for that. And so anybody that's going on the pilgrimage is like, it's going to be difficult. There's going to be some times there. It's like, why did I bother coming? It's like, I can't believe I have to share a hotel room with this person. They snore or, or you know, I, you know, I'm sitting on this, on this bus for so long and all these different kinds of things that come up. There are going to be some challenges that come up. Uh, uh, expectations are going to be subverted in some kind of way at some point along the way. And so what do you do? You know, what... What should you expect then from a pilgrimage? Well, obviously, you know, the way I'm going to answer this is, you know, you have to expect the trials. You have to expect the challenges that you go, you're going to, to face in some kind of way. But I'd also sort of add that you, it's good to go into these things trying not to expect anything and trying to be very, very open to the experience. Because if you expect something out of this journey, you're not going to get it. It's going to go the wrong kind of way. If you can be very, very open, this is when you can actually transform. If you're expecting something and you're wanting something out of it, the transformation won't occur. And it won't occur in the way that you actually want it to. Because we always, you know, Whenever we go somewhere like this, we always have these expectations of what it's going to be like, and it's never like that. But if we can actually be very open, then actually we open ourselves up to that transformation. I myself went on a, a pilgrimage to India uh, when I was uh, uh, quite a younger monk, and and in all honesty, I didn't want to go. I got uh, I was I was. I was only a few punters at the time. I was only I've been a monk for a few years, and my teacher Ajahn Anand, he'd go to India nearly every year, and he just said, uh, "Kevin, you're going." And I'm like, "No, nah, I don't want to go. Uh, uh, I don't want to go." It's like, for me, all my all my spiritual heroes like like Ajahn Man, Ajahn Mahabua, Ajahn Chah, none of these people had gone to India. Um, like, no, I don't need to go to India. I, you know, the, the, the real practice is here in my own heart. I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need any of this. And um, I, you know, being a, a basically a petulant child about it, I'm like, I don't know, I'm not going. I'm not going. He's like, you're going. You, okay, I have to go and repairing all the bags. And there's a, you know, these, these, these kinds of things. There's a lot of things going on. You're Got a lot of bags, a lot of people. You're going in and out of airports and customs and your passports and all these kinds of things, and it's chaotic. I'm like, I don't want to do this. And the whole time, I'm being this kind of arrogant, petulant child about the whole thing, and I'm there and I'm grumpy and all these things. And get on the plane, get to India, and as we're flying in, as we're flying in over, over near, because you fly into Bogaya. You're flying over what's called the, like, uh, in the time of the Buddha, it's called the Magadan country. That's where the Buddha uh, did a lot of his earlier teachings. And you fly in over it, and we're flying over the rice fields. And as we're flying in over the rice fields, I sort of I look down, and the way the rice fields are laid out, it's laid out like the robe of a monk. And so a part of our part of our rules. Uh, actually, uh, the Buddha actually said, it's like he gave the instructions to Ananda, it's like, this is how you should make your robes, like the rice fields of Magadha. So if you look at the, probably can't see, but there's like these little crosses and sections on our robes. And I look down and that's, that's what it was like. And it's like, so, so there was something sort of switched there. It's like, this is real. Like this becomes real now. And so the whole trip, uh, like, there was something totally changed in me. I, and I wasn't expecting it. Again, I was fighting against it. I was fighting against this thing. And getting to these places and going to these places, it, 
it brought up a kind of faith in me that I, I really didn't think I had. I, again, as I said, I'm, I'm not very much the gushing, happy kind of faith uh, character. But some of those things became very, very real for me. And very, uh, I started to have a lot of those kinds of experiences through doing this. And that was just because of opening up to it. I was resistant to it, but then at some point you just sort of opened up to it and it really did change me and it really was quite quite rewarding to go on that and I did get a lot out of it, going to the different places and especially, you know, some of the lesser known places, like, you know, so for example, like Vulture's Peak, it's a like it's a rock and there's these caves and it's like, well, you know, these things don't really change too much, these caves. So you could think, you know, this is where the Buddha walked or this is where Sariputta was in this kind of cave and gave this teaching. So these things, it really became really real for me. So what happened was I'd ordained and I have this kind of abstract idea of what Nibbana is and what Buddhism is. And it all, and it was a very abstract for me. And it all, on that trip, it actually all became real. Something came into being with it, which was uh, really, really inspiring for me. And so this is, you know, this is the value of a pilgrimage, um, that it is some kind of transformation. But, you know, obviously a lot of you here, you aren't, you know, aren't going on the pilgrimage, but that's, again, that's fine. What a pilgrim is, is somebody that undergoes this, tries to undergo this transformation goes through some sort of tribulations and is transformed in some way and then brings that back into their daily life. So, you know, it's the, I think the ethos of the pilgrimage that's going, it's very, very good. It's about, it's about instantiating the clear mountain community and having this, this uh, ideal that we're going to bring this thing into life. And this is actually something all of you can do from here. This is something that you can do within your heart. You know, we obviously, we, um, we practice the Dhamma for some kind of reason. You know, you're doing it to understand something more about your life. You're doing it to transform something about yourself. So anybody that's not going, you can still be a part of this. What you're doing here, as I said, I said this last week, I think it's very uh, inspiring what you're doing here, building this kind of community first. And this is something that you're actually a part of. This is something that you're going to bring into being. This is going to something that's it's just now basically an idea. And you're going to make it a reality in some kind of way. And so this is really part of the, the pilgrim's path. You know, as I said, there's the external pilgrimage. But then the internal pilgrimage, and this is this is so important, you know, the internal pilgrimage is, you know, bringing the Dhamma up in our hearts. This is the internal pilgrimage. What we're trying to do is bring the Dhamma up in our hearts. And then if we can bring it into the external pilgrimage of bringing that into the world, and that's what I think you're doing here, you're coming together uh, as a community, uh, having, this, uh, uh, having this desire to uh, build this kind, of, this kind of community of people and then a monastery maybe that's associated with it. So I think everybody can actually be a part of that. doesn't matter if you go on the external pilgrimage or not. That doesn't really matter. Or the people that are going the, on the external pilgrimage, that's great, obviously. But really, it's about changing something within yourself, improving something within yourself, going through some kind of obstacle understanding something, but then bringing it back and bringing it to life and bringing it into your daily life and into your existence. So with that, I hope you uh, develop a lot of the Dhamma within your heart, and I hope you bring the Dhamma into the world through that. So with that, I'll call it a day there. And I don't know what happens next. This is Going to Q and A. Is it Q and A today, or is it breakout groups, or is or was it was there something that needed to be done? Yeah.
Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I liked what you did last week with the barricade groups. It it takes a lot of the onus off me to keep talking. <laughs> So if you if you'd like to if you'd like to do a few of those things where you turn to turn to the people that you don't know and you know break off into groups of three, I think it is, and have a chat about it. And actually maybe something you could yeah, you can talk about whatever you want, uh, but you know, maybe if you if that's something that you can contemplate, like what what is a pilgrimage and, and what does what is a pilgrim and what does that actually mean to you in some kind of way? So I'll give you I'll give you a few minutes to chat amongst yourselves about that. And I'll break the I really usually usually uh, usually uh, uh I'm usually in a position where you give a talk and you or, or you've led a meditation, it's like, okay, who's got some questions? And it's like silence. It's like Okay, I just gotta ramble. <laughs> so it's really good. It's really good you have these like nice icebreakers. So does anybody have any kind of reflections? Anything they that came up? Don't give me the silence. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love what you said about obstacles mm. because um I, I go on pilgrimages, I go to Japan. No. And um they're all set out like thirty three Kanon or Kuan Yin pilgrimages. Yeah, nice. And so many obstacles that it becomes a joke. Yeah. Yeah, and that <laughs> that I, I I actually have been on trains where I've just been laughing in yeah. Japan, and I really appreciate you pointing that out because rather than oh my gosh here it is again and mm. I took the bus and it's closed and it's ninety five degrees, like um, I mean I do learn from it mm. eventually, but mm. to learn from it maybe in the moment. So I really mm. appreciated that. And the other thing is Sophie, Sophia. So, Sophia said that it was a pilgrimage for her to get here. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. That's a really good one. And, and most of the time it is. Like, if, again, if we think about what a what pilgrimage it? actually is, it, is, it doesn't have to be this grand, this grand uh, you know, uh, journey that we go on. It can be very, very small things. Um, it can even, again, it can also even be like an internal thing. You can think of the Buddha uh, uh, searching for enlightenment as, as, as a kind of pilgrimage as well. So yeah, even even this, even the the smallest things of going, okay, well let's like let's go to this like school or whatever it is, whatever <laughs> you know, school, and just walk through the door and see if anybody's there, uh, or all the way up to all the way up to enlightenment. That's a I, there's. Uh, it's a, a kind of pilgrimage in some kind of way, so it's really nice. I'll say one other thing. Mm. Maybe it's similar to it's all a pilgrimage, mm. just like it's all meditation. Mm. Nice, nice, very good. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. I think in um, kind of discussing situations, because not everybody in my group had gone on a spiritual pilgrimage, mm. but we had done things in our lives that kind of resembled that. Mm. And, mm. and I was reflecting on how um, a lot of times in our life, we have a clear picture of what's in front of us mm. and when we get somewhere, what it will be like mm. or our, our planning and thinking about the aspect of pil pilgrimage that even if you've seen pictures or have an intent on where you're going. Mm. The um, experience is so, can be so foreign or unknown what you're going in. It's really a time where it's set apart from life and in that there's just an unknowing. Mm. And we don't live a lot of our lives in that unknowing space. Yeah. And kind of, that kind of opens it up to see what's really, what you're really carrying into a situation. Yeah, nice, nice. And it's, it's it's such a huge part of it, the unknowing part of it, and uh, I, I touched on it a little bit with the the expectations that you have. Um, expectations can blind you in so many ways, um, and they, they also can they can make things uh, troublesome as well because you expect things to be a certain way and you go into an unknown situation, and you know, by by definition, this thing is unknown, so you shouldn't really expect something to to happen. 
if you have that expectation, you go into this unknown and it doesn't live up to that expectation, you can have this kind of, well, this isn't what, what, what I wanted. And so really opening up to that, I think it's such a, such a hard thing to do. And like you were saying, right, in the moment, you know, uh, opening up to that thing in the moment. So it's so hard to do, but if you can do it, that's where you really do get a lot of the rewards. So yeah, nice reflection. Yeah. yeah. Just really like this topic. Nice, um, nice. <laughs> I especially, you know, the there's the external pilgrimage, the internal pilgrimage, mm. and how I, I'm just sort of struck by they're they're not really separate. Like, no, no, yeah, no, no. and um, what you were saying about sort of fighting and resisting the whole experience of going mm. and then going and sort of opening. Yeah, and I just. To me, that's like daily life. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a struggle to get out of bed. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just I'm in my comfortable bed. I don't want to leave, but you know, I know I have to get out and face something. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So mm. just this idea of like going on this huge journey, but then also it's sort of the same as as ordinary life. Yeah. 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 yeah nice. Nice. And it it really, if you think about your whole your whole you could say a uh, uh, motif of actually undertaking uh, meditative practice or undertaking some kind of spiritual path. The whole thing is a part of it. Is a whole part of, is a part of the journey. Is a part of this kind of pilgrimage as well. Obviously, yeah. And there's there's definitely those the you know, really everything in life is a kind of pilgrimage. But there's also something about there's also something about you know, maybe you know you you know that you should change in some way or you know that you should try to improve in some way but you don't want to you don't want you're sort of safe and you're stuck and like i don't you know i don't want to get out of bed you know or, or i don't want to get up and meditate or i don't want to jump on a plane and shave my head and go into a jungle in thailand or something like that. i don't want to do it. <laughs> i don't want to do these things <laughs> but it's there's that aspect there of if you can you're either forced to do it by someone or you know that yourself that you should do it even though you don't want to do it. There's something, there's something, there's a, a, a momentum there, a power there in that. So if you can tap into that, I think that's such a, such an important thing to actually do. Yeah. 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 Steve. Howdy there, folks. Uh, so I'm going to, out myself that up until two days ago I was going to go on the pilgrimage and now I'm not yeah. and so that's uh, it's a whole journey um, and, and I was feeling a lot of well, pain you know when you're talking about it because I've been to Asia a bunch of times and I, one of my favorite things is getting on a plane and the whole thing mm. which is part of the discernment because you know for me I, I don't get to my, my life much but um, my wife and I have been for like 10 years trying to decide what's next, where to live. And somehow the stars, I don't know what's going on with the stars, but they align. So this perfect place on top of a hill at Cottage Lake, surrounded by wetlands, mm. like a nature bubble, mm. came up that we can actually make it happen. And we did it. Mm -hmm. And and now she needs me to be there to process, mm -hmm. you know, and not be three, you know, other side of the globe for three weeks. Mm. So it was really a heart opening. Um, because I would have been on a plane to Kathmandu tomorrow morning. Mm. Otherwise, I was going to go early. And uh, so painful. And But I feel like uh, part of what I'm doing with it is discerning the part of it that wanted to go on a trip versus what was the cutting through to awakening part. And I'm just kind of leveraging into that. Yeah. in this world because okay, that's what it's about and and you know you can be i mean i i'll, I'll tell her you can be sitting in bogaya and thinking about ice cream yep. or you can be sitting I've here and it. resting in the nature of mind you know <laughs> yeah. so yeah. Yeah. i'll try to go for the latter and mm. and uh i'm going to use this as a lever to just fire up my focus on awakening and yeah. and, and by yeah. the way the place we're going is you know about 25 minutes or 30 minutes out from here mm 
in the direction that Clear Mountain will be in. So we'll be in the zone too. Nice. So it's yeah. Nice. But anyway, it's been a struggle. But but yeah. my you know, my wife is very appreciative, and that counts for a lot. I'm like learning how to be a better husband in a Dharma way. Nice. Yeah. Well, you know, like if if you if you reflect as well, you know, part of a pilgrimage is to improve something, and to improve something about yourself, and find find something and find some kind of reward, and then bring that back home. That's that's a really important part of it. We always think about the pilgrimage of going to the place, but we sort of forget that you know, part of part of that is like bringing this thing back home as well. There's something that you need to bring back into your life. There's something that you need to bring back and, and make it come into being. And to do that, you have to give something up. You have to give. You have to let go of something, uh, a part of yourself. You have to let go a part of your identity to be able to do that. Because if you sort of cling to this this identity of if you cling to this identity of wanting to go to this particular kind of place and you're there and you're you all you do is get stuck in this in this other new place but again it's about letting go of something being on some kind of journey and changing through that and then bringing that back into your life so if you can whatever it is if it's making you a better person if it's making you come into line with the dhamma more this is the journey you need to be on. You know, not the, maybe it's not the, not, the, not the plane that you need to be on, but this is the kind of journey that you need to be on. So it's good that you have that, uh, you have that kind of uh, uh, wisdom faculty there already to actually even start to understand that, because most people would be like, you, know, you, you get bitter at your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the new place now. It stopped me going to Kathmandu, but you already have that wisdom there yeah. to <laughs> be able to accept that. So that's a that's a good thing. No, exactly. It's like it's like, where's your head going to be at four weeks from now? Yeah, and yeah. then just make it post pilgrimage, even though you didn't do that. Nice, nice. Yeah. And I'll just I'll, I'll close by saying the great Buddhist aphorism: wherever you go, there you are. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Maybe one last, one last one. If anybody has a question or a reflection, yeah, yeah. As I listen to all these awarenesses, I'm getting this kind of fractal sense in the way that the universe repeats itself to down and down to smaller and smaller scales, mm. but the same reality happening, the same patterns happening, mm. or outward beyond all imagination for how great mm. it is, and yet it still is, is itself. And so I'm hearing your pilgrimage beginning as you get out of bed, or as you come through the snow to here, mm. or as you enter into this group and, and talk and share, and, um, or as you go across the ocean to mm. see the Bodhi tree. Mm. As, as you go deeper and deeper inside, I'm just getting this, this sense of what today is, I hear so much as fractals and the, mm. that the world works this way, that mm. this is reality. Mm. I'm getting a sense of that from all the things that everybody's saying. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good reflection and you can also sort of think of the the entirety of one's existence as well. You know, the, the, the point of conception to the point of death as well. You know, that's the, at least the biggest subsection of the fractal that we will experience now. And you, know, you can you even expand it out even further kind of thing. So yeah, I, I think there's so many different layers of analysis that you can look at this thing. And, and at different times, they're going to be important for us in different ways. So, uh, you know, at some times it might be the very the mundane. The mundane is like, okay, yeah, I gotta, I gotta get out of bed. That's and that's the most important thing. Or it might be the, or it might be the the kind of, well, I'm on my my deathbed at this time, and this is now the most important thing, and this is the culmination of this fragmentary existence that I've had. 
So at any different time, these are going to be different. So it's we have to just know what is the most important one at any given time as well and be be open and be able to tune into that and to be able to deal with it in the best, again, to be open to transformation in that moment. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is Zoom. Oh, I for, sorry, I forgot Zoom people. The whole TV over there. Sorry. <laughs> Did somebody on Zoom have something to say? I, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Sorry. You can unmute. You can unmute yourself if you just want to yell something at me. <laughs> sorry. Hi, John. Hi, whoever that is. I can't see that far. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering if um, your talk on expectations, is that related to? You've, you've lost sound, Joseph. You're muted. How about now? Can you hear yep. me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So in your, um, in your talk about expectations, and it, uh, it reminded me of in the morning chant where it says, not attaining one's wishes is dukkha. Yep. Is that related to it? So how do we how do we relate to wishes? Do we not should we not have wishes? Good yeah, good question. Um there's one it is good to have wholesome aspirations. There's a very there's there's a difference there between what we call chanda, which is a you could say like a wholesome desire to do something to do something useful um, mm -hmm. or to do something beneficial. And there's a difference between upada that uh, chanda and upadana. Upadana is like clinging and wanting things to be a particular kind of way. And so mm -hmm. most of the time, the kind of wishes that we're talking about in that, in that particular chant is these wishes of wanting things to be a particular, you know, I want something to be that ex exact way. Whereas mm. these kinds of wishes of aspirations of wanting to do something good, you know, this we know that this can change. We know that this can move. Um, and so am I talking about those kinds of expectations? Well, I, I guess I, I'm talking about expectations of and, and many different kind of levels there. The, you know, the expectations. And I guess I'm probably leaning a little bit more into the expectations that come about with wanting things to be a particular kind of way as opposed to the... Uh, uh, the desire to uh, increase and do something beneficial, more about the wanting it to be a, a particular kind of way. So, yeah, those, those kinds of expectations, I'd say. Thank you. Thank you.